Create your breakthrough. Today's the day that somebody in this live creates their breakthrough. I know you've been waiting on a breakthrough. You've been praying for a breakthrough. You've been hoping for a breakthrough. But at some point in our life, we got to create our breakthrough. And I created my breakthrough today by not quitting, by not giving up. It was hard out here today. It was terribly hard out there. Out there. And I could have quit. I could have went back. But I said, you know what? Me going through this struggle and me continue to push through this struggle, me continue to, to, to find the strength and endurance that can keep on going, that is creating my breakthrough. You guys in here don't give yourself enough credit. You discredit yourself so much because you look at your life and you say, man, my life is not with, where theirs is, or I'm not doing what I want to do, or my life can be better. And yes, it may can be better. And yes, it will get better. But first, you need to appreciate the life that you have. The first step to elevating your life and changing your life is to appreciate your life, my friend. It starts right now. Find massive appreciation for your life. I know we have been programmed to find what's wrong. I know we've been programmed to always find our complaints, but when's the last time you've been thankful? Thankful for your life, thankful for your situation. Even if your situation might not be favorable, at least you have life, at least you have breath. Put your hand over your heart. At least you got a heartbeat to continue to give life another chance. It's not over. And so I want you to make up in your mind right now that I'm going to create my breakthrough. I'm going to create my breakthrough today. I'm going to find something in my life to be proud of. And again, give yourself some credit. You are stronger than what you think. Everything you've been through, survived through, got through, conquered through, made it through, you're stronger than what you think. Don't you realize that? But a lot of us, what we do is we discredit ourselves. We feel sorry for ourselves. We find all the reasons to self-sabotage. We find all the reasons to be our own enemy instead of our own best friend. We find reasons to literally destroy our life instead of finding the reasons to continue to build our life and be proud of our life. We're shameful of our life because what we're going through, listen, we are throwing away shame today. We're throwing away self-sabotage today. We're throwing away self-pity today. And I want you to walk in confidence. I don't care what your life looks like. I don't care if you don't have what they have. I don't care if you're struggling right now. I want you to walk in confidence because last time I checked, we served a greater God. Greater than your pain, greater than your circumstances, greater than your situations, greater than your financial struggles. Last time, I get greater than your health issues. Last time I checked, we served a greater God. So why are we walking in pain? Why are we walking in unbelief? Why are we walking in lack of faith? As if God can't change things. As if God can't change things around. Listen, my prayer today on Instagram, go listen to it, was God. I'm feeling down, but I'll never stop trusting you to turn things around. God, I'm feeling down, but I'll never stop trusting you to turn things around. And so I want you to give yourself some credit today. I want you to smile at yourself. I want you to be proud of yourself. I want you to, if you're feeling low in life, if you're feeling down in life, I understand. But today's the day that you create your breakthrough. I want you to go give yourself some love today. I want you to take care of yourself. I want you to protect your peace. When's the last time you did something for you? I want you to shower yourself with love today. That's what I want you to do. So if you got to take time to go for a walk and that's your form of love, you got to go get a massage, you go do something that you want to go do, go do that today. As long as it's positive, as long as it's healthy. But I want you to start giving your life what you want somebody else to give your life. See, some of us, you're waiting on me to come on live and say this to you. Some of you, you're waiting on somebody to give you something, somebody to give you that breakthrough. And I understand that God can provide people to help you get breakthroughs. Maybe you're getting a breakthrough in this message. I understand that. But at some point in your life, you got to say it all starts with me. Everybody in the chat right now say it all starts with me. At some point in your life, you got to say it's all it all starts with me. And when you take that pledge, when you when you take that responsibility, you understand you have the power to create your breakthrough. Because you serve a powerful God and your breakthrough might not look like sunshine and rainbows. Your breakthrough might not look like smiles. Your breakthrough might not look like excitement, but your breakthrough is simply, you know what? I was going to give up today. I didn't. You broke through. Your breakthrough might look like, man, this person left my life and I'm struggling. I'm depressed. I'm hurt, but I didn't give up. You broke through. Your breakthrough might be like me, right? The run didn't go too well. I was struggling a little bit but I didn't quit. I broke through. Your breakthrough isn't always going to look like power that we think because power that we think we think is just some, ah, that's not power. 
right? That's a result of the power that you experience, right? Power is going through weak moments, going through trying times and continuing not to surrender to those moments. That's power. Power isn't perfect. Power isn't always beautiful. Power is saying, you know what? I'm going through a trying time right now. I'm going through some hard seasons in my life right now, but I'm not giving up. That's when true power is displayed, y'all. So some of you more powerful than you think. Some of you think that, man, I cried this morning, but I got up, I wiped the tears and I went on about my day and I handled my business like a G, right? Like a person I'm supposed, like I went about my day and I handled my duties. I stayed loyal to my commitments. That's power. See, some of you think that you're weak because you're, you're crying tears. Some of you think that you're weak because you're breaking down, but you haven't fully broke. You might be breaking down, but you're about to break through today. That's power. When all eyes are stacked against you and you still beat the odds, that's power. When a lot of these things outside of us is trying to destroy our mental health, trying to destroy how we feel about ourselves, but we struggle with it, but we don't surrender to it, that is power. Don't you realize, Kate, Angie, Samantha, I see you saying amen. Don't you realize that you have power inside of you because you're still here. you still here. If people read your story and understood your life, they would say how. If somebody read your story on paper and everything that you deal with, and you was able to put everything that you deal with in your life, all the mental health things you deal with, all the thoughts that people don't know about, the silent battles that are going on in here, convincing us that we're not enough, convincing us that, you know, we'll never keep continuing to do whatever, like putting fear in our life, putting fear in our future. You see, the enemy wants to do that, by the way. Even when your life is going good, the enemy wants you to self-sabotage and say, hey, it's not going to stay like this forever. It's not going to be like this forever. And the enemy wants to put fear in your future. So now you start operating fear in your now. And that's not the way we live life. God tells us in scripture, right? We don't have a spirit of fear. He tells us to be fearless. We don't have a spirit of fear. Spirit of fear does not come from him. So we can't be fearful. That's a trick of the enemy. To create fear in being who you are. To create fear in going for the thing that's in your soul. To create fear in your future. So now you live a fearful present that ends up creating a fearful future. And so today, if anything, I want you to spend time with yourself and I really want you to think about life. Melissa, you lost so much faith. Go get it back, baby. Go get it back. I know you lost faith. I lost faith at times in my life, right? Because we start thinking like, why should I have faith when every time I believe Trent, every time I try to do better Trent, another storm hits my life. Every time I get my head above water, another flood hits my life, Trent. And you start to lose faith. You can't lose faith. You can lose a lot of things. You can lose people. You can lose yourself at times, but you can't lose faith because faith is all that we have. Faith that things will get better. Faith that I will heal. Faith that I will find my way back to me. If I don't find my way back to me, I have faith that I will create a better me. God will give me a better version of myself. Faith that better days are coming. We gotta have faith because faith creates that hope inside of us. And when we have hope, hope is not enough alone, I don't believe. But when we have hope, hope can create action. And we when we, we, when we display actions that are based around hope, then guess what? We change our situations. We change things. We take more responsibility for our life and we start to look different, act different. We don't stay in our silent battles. Some of you are staying stuck in your silent battles and you're not doing anything. You're not moving your body. You're not changing, doing anything. You're staying stuck in these silent battles. And I'm going to tell you right now, from a mental health perspective, and I'm not a professional, right? I didn't go to school for all this stuff, but I do know I have a PhD in life. And I've been doing this for a long time and coached thousands of people across the world. And I know this is true. When it comes to mental health, one of the best things you can do for mental health is get outside of yourself. And what I mean by that is get outside of this mind. Do things that distract your mind. Positive distractions are great for your life. We, we, we always indulge in negative distractions, right? Negative distractions are things that, that aren't good for you to keep you unfocused. But there's a thing that's positive distractions. Me being on the trail is a positive distraction. It gets me out of my head. Some of you are just sitting with your thoughts all day. And what you feed your mind, again, will grow in your soul. You will start to find justification. You will start to believe the silent battles. Thoughts are just thoughts. They're meant to flow in and flow out. I have thoughts of I'm not enough a lot, but I don't believe it. I don't sit with it. And when I feel like I'm not enough, you know what I do? I go prove to myself that I am enough. I don't sit with it. And I want to give you that actionable tip right now because action creates transformation. When you feel like you're not enough, go prove it to yourself. Go do something different. If you feel like you're not enough, go do something that shows you that you're enough. Don't sit with, don't sit with these thoughts. 
Don't sit with the thoughts in your head and just try to justify that because if you don't move these thoughts, right? That's why moving your body is very, very important because you're moving your energy. You're moving your cells, right? You're moving your the oxygen. The blood's pumping through you. You're not just sitting with it. You're releasing. Some of us need some releases in our life. We hold on everything. and all, If you don't release, it will increase. If you don't release, what you don't release, it will increase. What you don't release, it will increase. What you don't release, it will increase. You can't say with it. My hardest times in life is when I stay and set with it and I had no release. I allowed my mood to keep me in the house, eat junk food, not take care of my health, not move my body, not move around, feel sorry for myself. And guess what? It just stacked. The stress just stacked. Depression just stacked. And to a place where you get to, you feel like, man, I can't even get out this battle no more. Life is a battle. It's a constant battle between the external and internal every single day. And you are at war. And my friend, you are at war with so many outside things, but a lot of us were choosing to be at war with ourselves. And life is too short to spend another day at war with yourself. This world already wants to defeat you, wants to defeat your spirit and wants to make you give up. It's designed, literally, it's designed to make us feel like we're not enough. That's how this world is designed. And that's already a hard enough battle in itself, right? Don't create the own battle within you. You got to be on team you, right? You got to be on your own team. You can't be your own enemy because you're going to have so many outside enemies, not people necessarily, but so many outside enemies. Comparison is an enemy. All these things. So I wanted to just come on here today. I'm actually about to fly to St. Louis. I got to speak, but I want to just come on here real quick and just pour into y'all's life, man. And just say, I'm proud of you. Like, you need to give yourself some credit. Just spend today, like, thinking about everything you've been through. I don't want you to think about where your life is or what's going on or, you know, this happened, this happened. Like, yeah, that's true. And we'll face those things. But for today, for me, all I want you to do is just, like, look at your life, man. Go go prove it to yourself. Go prove that you're worth it. Go prove that that you are enough. Like, go prove it. And the best way to prove it, I love physical activity. That's why I'm out here. There's nothing better in the world to me than physical activity because physical activity creates challenge. It creates a challenge. And when you overcome challenge, you build confidence. Even if you don't accomplish the challenge, like I did today, I went to go through three miles and I only did 1.5 and I ran and walked, but it's okay because it built confidence in me. It built confidence in me and it moved my body and it shifted my mood. I didn't want to come on live today at all. But after I got off the trails, I said, man, I feel good. I want to get this message to y'all. So I know these things are common sense, but we got to make it common practice because these are the tools that really create change in your life. And it's so simple. I'm not here to give you some five step process that's, you know, all complicated because I want to sound smart. I'm giving you all the tools, the simple tools that you need to apply to your life. So you need a release in your life. And in the book, I talk about different releases, but one release that I want to just focus on today, one release is I want you to focus on it's a physical release if you can. I want you to dedicate for the next 30 days of doing a physical release every single day. Okay? Movement influences mood. Can you do that for me? Some of you are already doing it. And if I may suggest, get out in nature. Get out in nature. Nature is God's playground. Nature is God's natural medicine for the soul. Nature, you feel life around you. You hear birds chirping. Right, you see flowers blooming, especially this time of the year if you're down south or I don't know about up north. But you see flowers blooming, it's greenery. You start to see life. And when you start to see life, it does something to you. Nature is God's natural medicine for the soul. Nature is a free prescription for your spirit. And so I want you to get out there and protect your peace. Get out there, cry it out, shout it out, pray to God about it, talk it out. You know, be angry at God if you got to. I know that might not seem popular, but hey, we're human beings. God, what's up? What's up with all this pain? God, man, come on. I need your help. I need you. You got to build that relationship. I had a conversation with my son yesterday in the car about relationship with God and what that should look like in his way. And I said, you need to explore that, bro, because everybody want to tell you how to live and what you should be doing. And everybody want to preach religion on you so much. And I get it, but you need to build relationship. You know what I mean? Going to church and doing this just for check boxes is not enough. You got to build a relationship. I connect with God out here. This is my church. Nature is my church. 
I still go to physical church too, but my greatest church is out here. I have fellowship with people out here. I have fellowship with myself out here. I celebrate our praise out here. And I don't care what anybody thinks or anybody says, I'm connected with God more than ever when I'm out here. And it might be different for you, but I suggest you and I would suggest to you and give, this, give you an idea that get out of nature, man. It's good for your soul, I promise you. I ain't never met a bad attitude in nature, ever. But I've been out here for about 20 years strong. I've never met a bad attitude in nature. I've met love. I might met some, you know, kind of suspect people out here, you know what I mean? But I met love and I met just goodness and spirit and the energy's right. And so that would be my suggestion to you. I'm proud of you, man. I'm proud of you. I really am. And I can't say that enough. And I just want you to get your breakthrough. I want you to create it. And breaking through, like, it's like small steps every single day. And I'll just leave you with this. Like, I want to make this so simple. Like, if you did something today that you didn't want to do, that was hard for you to do. It could have been going to work. It could have been waking up, getting out your bed. It could have been doing a workout. It could have been spending time with God, whatever it is. If you did something that you couldn't have, that you didn't want to do and you still did it, that's a breakthrough. That's a breakthrough. And I want you to stack as many breakthroughs as you can. I want you to stack as many breakthroughs as you can. You know what I mean? And that's what life is about. So I'm about to get ready to go to St. Louis. Um, I got to speak tomorrow out there. Hopefully I'll see y'all soon. Hey, my 40th celebration in September. Uh, I'm about to release the information here in the next few weeks. So I'd love to see you in Dallas, September 21st weekend. It's going to be a rehab weekend. All right, we're going to do something we've never done before. So I hope to see you, hope to meet you there. And I'll talk to you soon. Thanks for rocking with me today. All right, I love y'all. Protect your peace, protect your life, protect your soul. Let's get it. Protect your peace, available everywhere. Go get the book. Audio book is coming soon. Audio book will be here by the end of May. So all y'all that don't like to read, but you want to hear the audio book, go get the audio book. It will be here soon. I'll let y'all know. I'll announce it. The audio book is going to be insane. It's going to be different than the book. So you really need both. But if you don't like to read, the audio book will be available. And yes, it will be me reading the audio book. I won't have Joe Blow reading the audio book. You know what I mean? So uh, y'all have a good day. It all starts with you. Let's get it.